Hello, and welcome to Idaho Birder, a video cast featuring Idaho birding members, their adventures, news, and tips. I'm your host, Tom Carroll. This is episode number two, Ken Miracle, Shoot, Share, and Conserve. Did you hear the bird song at the opening of the show? I know some of you could instantly identify the bird. It's a, wait for it, wait for it, a yellow warbler. Was it the song of a particular bird that attracted you to birding? Or the stunning colors and patterns of a bird's plumage? Or maybe it was their curious behaviors? Regardless, there are many paths to birding. Today's guest, Idaho photographer, birder, hunter, and conservationist Ken Miracle, lost the upper register of his hearing as a teenager, so he's not able to hear high-pitched birdsong. Instead, Ken's early experiences growing up near the greater sage-grouse got him hooked on birds and conservation. During Ken's career with the Idaho Department of Agriculture, he was deeply involved in efforts to preserve the sage-grouse and its habitat. After retiring, Ken took up photography, and he now volunteers much of his time, considerable photographic talent and goodwill toward animal conservation and habitat preservation. In 2014, Ken was chosen as one of Field and Stream's Heroes of Conservation Award finalists. Ken and his wife, Margie, live at the east end of Boise, along Heron Cove, which is a paradise for birders and nature lovers. Here's Ken. Hi, I'm Ken Miracle, and I've been involved with sage grouse and infatuated with them since I was three or four years old. My uncle was a rancher, and we ranched on the Idaho-Nevada border, right in sage grouse country. Ken got his start in sage grouse conservation while working at the Idaho Department of Agriculture and serving on the Oahe Local Working Group. Their aim was to find ways to conserve sage grouse habitat. The high sage step is a habitat environment that is sensitive for pronghorns and sage grouse and sage perils and many other things. But if you continue to degrade the habitat, then you lose not just the sage grouse, but a lot of other species. Sage grouse have declined in population, so they've been a threatened species. They've been looked at at being listed as endangered. And so I have done everything from promoting them with my photography and to planning helping plan wet meadow restoration, doing a lot of work with the Nature Conservancy and many other groups that uh, Trout Unlimited amazingly all get together in trying to do the same thing. Ken, what are these habitat restoration projects like? Little Jack's Creek's a great example where you have a upper basin that provides all the water into Little and Big Jack's Creek. And if you restore those wetlands, which we've done, then you have a big sponge that releases water all year long, even in dry years. And that's habitat for red band rainbows, which is another fairly rare species for Idaho. And so it gives you brood rearing habitat for sage grouse and gives you red band rainbow habitat. So the projects we work on are for a lot of species. And this one area I walked onto the project one day, the first thing that we saw were not sage grouse that day. They were pronghorn. They were a long-haired owl that flew by me. There were cinnamon teal coming off the pond. And when we first did this whole project, there was maybe a pronghorn once in a while, but almost nothing utilizing this area because the old meadow had been eroded out and been destroyed by incorrect grazing. Sage grouse really need grazing because we don't have the huge herds of elk in the desert like we used to, but you have to balance it. And if you do it wrong, you end up destroying things like wet meadows. We do a lot of work with removing junipers from the wrong spot. We fought fires wrong, so junipers have given us a lot of problems. But all those things we can reverse and protect. And to me, that's just important because I love sage grouse. They're, they're an Idaho native. They're the, in this part of the state, they're the only real native upland bird. People think of pheasants and quail. Well, they're not native to Idaho. The forest grouse are native to Idaho. The sharp tail in the eastern part and some parts of this area. But the sage grouse are really the bird. Ken, over the past six years, you've seriously gotten into photography, and your work's beautiful. What sparked that interest? I'd kind of always been in conservation, but I had never really been into photography. And a friend of mine invited me to come up to Alaska. What we were going up there to do is go fly fishing for grayling and to hunt ptarmigan. And while we were fishing, a little stream called Gnome Creek, which is 30 miles from the Arctic Circle. And I had a little 
pocket waterproof camera with me, a little water, a little small camera. Pulled it out of my waders when I was just before I released this one beautiful grayling I had caught, and I took the picture. And the sun was at the back of my head, and it was one of the most beautiful colors of things that I ever saw. And it got my attention about, oh, well, this is kind of cool because photography is painting with light. And this thing to me was just an amazing painting. So this is not an enhanced photograph or like that. This is just flat out what those things look like. You've got that sun right over your shoulder. How did you get started in birding? I'd always been interested in birds. Then I ran into Idaho birding, Robert Mortensen, some other people, and then on down the line, Mary Rumpel and others within the group that started teaching me about how to identify these little brown jobbies, as Mary calls them, because the little brown birds to me were just little brown. They were all sparrows. I mean, I didn't know the difference. And yet I started realizing that I already could identify a lot of the waterfowl, but I was having a lot of fun identifying even some of those I'd never seen before and identifying other things. And at the same time, we had moved down here to Heron Cove, an amazing wonderland of things just right out my door. It's just a treasure trove. Oh, we're looking right now at the Heron Cove mascot. This is not a cropped image. I was he was very he was fairly close, but I was shooting my uh, P nine hundred that's got a two thousand millimeter optical zoom, and you even get to shoot around here. You you get the opportunity to, to I even photograph the normal things, and there's beauty in all the birds, even the ones that we don't even, that we kind of blow off and don't think of. So this is just an American robin, and yet it's just a nice, pretty photograph. You never know what you're going to find out around the area. I was thinking of volunteerism. This particular shot is a great blue heron with a snake <laughs> that it had caught. It was getting ready to have for lunch. They put this up for auction at one of their big banquets. So this great blue heron was for auction, and it turned out to raised the most money of any photograph from the event. And I was so pleased that day, too, because back to my theme of shoot, share, and conserve, the lady that bought it came up to me later at the end of the day, which she was getting ready to pay for the her purchase, and was just all excited. She said, I was so glad to get this photograph. She says, you would not believe this tells me so much and gets me all excited about birds. Ken, what's the origin of the shoot, share, and conserve philosophy, and, and what does it mean to you? Shoot, share, and conserve. The first time I heard something like that was from a instructor named Christopher Balmer, who was profiled by National Geographic as Mr. Owl a few years ago. He was always saying, you know, we need to get out there and take photographs and share them with people and promote conservation. My little theme when I went to the Toyota and Field and Stream Conservation Hero of the Year Award thing was shoot, share, and conserve. I've been able to take photographs, share them with others, and encourage people to love wildlife, whether it's birds or it's whatever it happens to be, sage grouse, of course, and go out and be aware and be willing to support and think about how they're going to conserve things. I've even done the same thing with monarch butterflies and milkweed. My wife and I, Margie, who's part of Idaho Birdie too, are also taggers for monarch butterflies. So we got and catch monarchs with nets and put tags on them, and then they can track them when they end up in California or wherever they happen to be. I've even practiced shoot, share, and conserve with butterflies, sage grouse, elk, deer, fish, you name it. How would you suggest that us birder photographers get started with shoot, share, and conserve? Well, you know, I found that Facebook is one of the best venues anymore. It's an extraordinary vehicle for sharing. And there are a lot of different groups out there that you can explore and find. But the other thing is to start and look for nonprofit organizations that are doing conservation. I've uh, contributed work to the even to the city of Boise for their little bird book that they've produced, uh, a guide to the birds of the Boise River. And again, you can also share it with Idaho Rivers United, Intermountain Bird Observatory. You can go and do presentations in schools. You could do presentations with uh, Idaho Camera. Heidi Ware and I have done that together. You can promote things like the Intermountain Bird Observatory. Find those vehicles where you can share the photography and get people excited about really cool, beautiful birds like this flying heron we're looking at right now. Red-breasted nuthatches, you know, all the different things that you can have so much fun 
getting people excited about. And when they see a really cool bird, I've had a lot of people that have commented to me, and it comes right up to the shoot, share, and conserve. I never knew that they looked like that. I've never been able to see those details until I saw your photograph. That is so cool. That makes my day when that happens and people get excited about birds or wildlife in general. How can I attract birds in my backyard? What can I do to get uh, milkweed? Uh, is that what, what you told me that they needed for Monarch? Well, how do I do that? Everybody, by just taking photographs and sharing their enthusiasm with friends, family, coworkers, every chance you get. So I'm on the board of directors for our Boise Camera Club. I'm known as the Birdman. I had one of the longest running Facebook banners for the Boise Camera Club and one of the only ones that was not a landscape because most photographers and that sort of thing are uh, landscape photographers. And we're looking right now at a immature bald eagle right here by my home at Heron Cove. And it's flying through the winter and many other times of the year Cottonwood Corridor, riparian area along the Boise River. These photographs are also used by a wide range of other nonprofits. I've got a photo of a uh, eagle on a nest that was specific to a request from Idaho Rivers United. There's a big push to try to preserve a particular eagle nest down on the West Boise River, not too far from Meridian Eagle. They wanted me to go out and take photographs of that particular eagle on the nest. We do have to take care of what's left, and we have to expand it, and we have to protect their habitat. And when you protect the habitat for all of these birds, guess what? You're protecting them, and you're conserving them. Ken, thank you very much. You're welcome. Ken not only practices shoot, share, and conserve locally, but he's also gone overseas and likes to share his images on Facebook. You can reach Ken through Facebook, Idaho Birding, or see his work displayed by many charitable organizations. You can see a list of all the organizations mentioned during this show in the notes below. And thanks to you for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of Idaho Birder. Until then, happy birding. The theme music for Idaho Birder is Duetino for Two Bassoons, composed by Eugene Bosa and performed by Arthur Grossman, Bruce Granger, and Terry Ewell licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike license.